So we're somewhere somewhere between Maldives and Seychelles, basically middle of the Indian Ocean, and we're starting to notice some weird stuff happening aboard our catamaran. Uh, stuff starting to separate. Whoa, that just opened up. Yeah. You see that? Yep. That whole thing's moving. So I'm trying not to be nervous about it. Um, Try not to be scared that we won't make it. So I'm, I'm, I don't think I'm scared that we're not making it. It's just, what does this mean for us? Like, what, are, what is it gonna take to fix this? What does it mean? What's broken? Um, why? And uh, it's scary, honestly. It's scary. I don't, I don't think like the boat's not gonna break apart right now. But we still have three days to go. I, don't, I just don't know. And then, and then what? And then what? And then is this going to take six months to fix? I don't know. It's kind of freaky, man. All right. <clears throat> so we're on a. This is a lagoon 410, 2000, year 2005. And our concern on this boat is this bulkhead. This is where the saloon door is. It's not the main bulkhead. Uh, there's a main forward bulkhead which is by the mast and then there's a rear main bulkhead which is back by the traveler. This one sits uh, in front of the cockpit behind the saloon and it's made up of these different panels. Uh, here's one. Uh, we believe this is tongue and groove in here. Here's another one and then they continue on. And at each seam of these panels it's starting to open up at the bottom and at the top it's compressing um, and right now we're just off of the Seychelles it's probably about oh I don't know a meter seas 10 second period so pretty docile and we're seeing some movement um, down at the bottom here Here I'll show you some more of the problems we're seeing. So this is the port side, the port stairwell, and up here um, where this joinery is, it joins, it's supposed to be flush to the outer part of the uh, hallway, and it's not, and it's not just not flush, it's moving back and forth as well, and again same kind of sea state, uh, one meter, ten second period. So right now we're actually going on a very broad reach and um, it is still moving. The panels are still moving. Um, we don't know what's wrong. Uh, the main bulkhead by the mast looks completely solid. The main bulkhead back by the traveler, the aft bulkhead looks completely solid. But obviously the boat's starting to separate. Um, we're seeing compression up here. Uh, up here in the caulking there's compression. And then this panel, um, is also popped out just a millimeter or two. The caulking up here is compressed. Down here it's cracked and opened and it's moving. Um, on the starboard side, we're seeing the same thing on this bulkhead. At the bottom it's starting to open up. At the top it's compressing. Not as bad on starboard as this port. Um, not sure what to do. Uh, it seems that this is tongue and groove and maybe the glue has failed in here. Uh, we don't know if there's a bigger problem with one of the major bulkheads causing these ones to pop. We're noticing other things. For example, this window, um, the caulking is, is super tight up here and super tight on the bottom right hand corner. So it's almost like the hull is, the outside hulls are almost lifting out um, or bending out. Uh, our Concern is that we have two young children aboard and our next leg takes us around the bottom of South Africa. So it's not island hopping that we're looking at. We're looking at serious cruising and encountering uh, bigger seas, bigger winds. So yeah. We've been told that the main aft structural bulkhead runs right along here and we agree with that. There's It's fiberglassed in, all laminated. And then the main forward bulkhead runs right up here 
underneath the mast obviously and over to the other side. So this bulkhead is possibly not structural, we're not sure, but it's definitely moving a lot. Sailing boat, sailing boat! Okay. Glad you check. Good afternoon, how are you? Yeah, fine. And how about you? Maybe you have a long trip. Yeah, very long trip. We're good. Uh, almost almost at uh, our destination, Seychelles. How about you? Where are you going? Ah, so you have a very long trip. Which, which port you came from and destination? Uh, we come from the Maldives. Where did you come from? Ah, in the Maldives. We came from Mozambique, Beira. And destination, India, Paradip. First, Trigon Mali, Sri Lanka for bunkering. Oh wow, long, long trip as well. How long does that take you? It's almost 15 days. 14 to 15 days. Oh yeah, well, good luck. Um, I think we have one day left. Ah, so which port you came from? May I, I can understand? Maldives, Maldives. Maldives, all in the island? Yeah, the island in the Maldives. Uh, and destination? This way? Uh, we're going to Seychelles. Haha, <laughs> okay. And so, you don't have AIS, huh? No AIS. Uh, we do have AIS, but it's not working. It stopped working on this trip. Um, we can see you, but I don't think you can see us. Oh, uh, yeah, I, I cannot see you. It's not monitoring you. No target on my uh, ICTs and my uh, my radar. Okay, uh, how far away did you see us? How many miles away? Ah, uh, only from uh, six, six to six, seven miles. Oh wow, that's close, okay. We better pay attention then. Uh, we uh, can't fix our AIS out here, so we have to wait until Seychelles. Okay, and which nationality you have? Uh, we're German, German. And how many crew? What? How many total crew you have on board now? What? I don't know if I want to answer all these questions. I think I'll just stay quiet. So many questions. Yeah, no, we won't answer that. How many crew on their boat? Where are they from? Uh, they were from Malta, so uh... Okay sir, thank you. Thanks for talking to you. Back to one six. And good watch. Bon voyage to your destination. Bon voyage to you as well. Uh, channel one six. One six. Out. This freighter just saw us and uh, they noticed that we don't have AIS. So our AIS stopped working in the Maldives and uh, yeah, that's not good. They saw us from six miles out on the radar. Kind of sketchy. Yours is never going to be longer than like four long if you keep eating them. We're never going to get an Eclipse. It's like there's three on there. Oh, I got to eat one. Oh, there's four on there. Oh, too many. <laughs> Maybe a little young, but she's got it, man. <laughs> hey, let's put some more on there before you eat them all. It's another day out here in the Indian Ocean, unpredictable weather, unforecasted weather. But uh, I think we're in the middle of a mini low, like the start of a little cyclone. I don't think this will develop into anything, but it's, it's interesting because it's circular and it's clear in the middle. And we just passed through the eye. It's really small, I'll show you. We're just coming up to the, I guess it'd be the western end, and the wind direction is exactly the way it should be. Uh, the wind will come from there, and then I'll come from there, like it, it turns this way. So, once we get through this part, we should be good to go. You can see the mini low spinning here in one of the models. It wasn't a big deal, but in general, the Indian Ocean has been one of the tougher crossings we've done so far. Not because it's been extra windy, but more because of the confused sea state and the constant shifting winds. The Indian just seems more volatile. Alright, I'm going to show you guys something about sail inventory aboard a sailboat. 
makes a big difference in terms of how fast you go. Right now we got our mainsail up, first reef, and we have our Genoa. This is our Genoa right here. It's on a furler. I'm gonna furl that Genoa. I'm gonna put out our Code Zero, or our cruisi co cruising Code Zero. It's a much bigger sail. Right now we're doing about four to five knots of boat speed. Once that sails out, we'll see how fast we go. So bear with me, hold on. There you go. Seven, eight knots. Said, what did we say before? Seven, eight knots instead of four to five knots. Just because of a bigger foresail. It makes the world a difference when you're sailing out here. I can't emphasize it enough. You need the proper sail inventory if you're sailing around the world. That means the sail inventory for different wind angles. So close hauled, reaching, downwind, and different sizes potentially for each of those. Ooh. Like he thinks there's mahi around here. Sorry, I just saw a bird dive. And ho! <laughs> you stoked about that. <laughs> Land ho! <laughs> Land ho! You can see the Seychelles after, I don't know how many days at sea. 10? Seems crazy that it's the same amount of time as from uh, Thailand to Maldives, but anyways, we can see the Seychelles. They're covered in a layer of mist and clouds. <laughs> it's beautiful. It reminds me of the Marquesas. And over here is a little island called Frigate or Frigat Island, which uh, we're gonna go probably check out uh, in the next month or two. Uh, there's a gentleman, very kind gentleman by the name of Hilton, who has invited us to come check it out. It's a private island, so pretty excited about that. Sometimes when you walk on shore, for the first time after a long passage, it feels like you're still on the boat. Everything's moving, it's crazy. We have shirts on and pants on, like real life pants. It's kind of exciting. We're going to real civilization. What does it remind you of, Ash? It's wet, it's lush, it's green. It's like the Marquesas. It's like Canada. <laughs> so it's funny how you see things as you sail around the world. They kind of sail with you. Ben seems to remember this catamaran for Fakarava. I have zero recollection, just so we're all clear. Total blur. But Ben has a lot better memory than I do for things like this. It's a pretty fancy, cool looking boat, so I'm gonna go with what he says. It's a sweet ass boat, man. We saw this boat in Fakarava, apparently. <laughs> Hello from the Seychelles. Hey, uh, yeah, Seychelles. I know, Thank high you. five. <laughs> high five, Willa. <laughs> high five. High five, Bodie. Blank stare. <laughs> You'll get there, dude. You'll we there. we made it. Uh, it wasn't a question we were going to make it, but uh, it was. Um, what do you think? It was probably one of the hardest passages we've had in a very, very, very long time. Like, basically, we think that our boat is. So, the like, hulls are kind of falling out at the back, and so what we likely need to do is haul the boat here in the Seychelles have it straightened because now it, we've noticed the stairs on port have dropped by about an inch um, and we need to straighten the boat and then we need to fiberglass it. Uh, we're just going to deal with it and if we need to patch it and just get it done and move it to South Africa where labor is cheaper we'll do that. So it may be that we just shore it up here like make it ugly and make it make it safe. I'm thinking of like screwing in metal strapping or throwing some fiberglass cloth on the parts that are separating and this. <laughs> <laughs> he started doing this when he wants more food. <laughs> okay. 
Uh, Bodhi, uh, anyway, Bodhi has changed so much in the last month. It is incredible. He now pulls himself up on the furniture and couch surfs everywhere. So like, you put him down in one spot and he's never where you left him. Baby gates are always shut. He can't make it over the sill yet and he can't make it up anything. But he is, he's always pulling himself up and then couch surfing. There's so many spaces for him to couch surf. He's, he just uh, loves it. It's gonna be eight months in a few days, in a week about. Yeah, so. eight months in a week. So we're stoked to be here. Uh, it's rainy season now. It's raining right now here in the mall. I, I did the Seychelles. <laughs> um, the temperature is a lot cooler. It's lovely. Um, and uh, yeah, we'll deal with stuff as it goes. We'll keep you updated on the bulkhead issue. This is all part of it, man. It's all part of sailing around the world. It's an adventure. Yeah, I would no say. No one said it was ever going to be easy. Thanks for following along, and we will see you guys when we're out here. We we'll, can't wait to show you what it's like here. Yep. Bye. Bye for now. And the Hoa, they have hooked up with us. Their catamaran, oh, she's looking sus. Creaks and groans along the way. Hoping they can sail her just another day. Sail west, cross the ocean blue, dodging squalls. We are the motley crew. Sail west, where the sun sets bright. Sail west.